This episode is supported by CuriosityStream. Start watching documentaries and other non-fiction titles at curiositystream.com slash S-U-I-B-H-N-E and use the code Sweeney for one month free. And by the patrons who chose today's topic. Sign up at Patreon to vote for the next country. In the city of Brussels, German philosopher Karl Marx and his collaborator Frederick Engels penned the Communist Manifesto, a book espousing a radical form of socialism which spoke of utopia and a revolutionary overthrow of the capitalist bourgeoisie. The same year, the revolutions of 1848 erupted in France, the German Confederation, Poland and the Italian Peninsula. Although these revolutions would be quelled, change was in the air. It had been more than a century since Russia had been invaded by Napoleon, and now in 1917 the powerful German Empire had captured Poland, Belarus and Lithuania. The Russian people were starving in the streets, and soon the capital was in revolution. First in the February overthrow of the monarchy, but later in October the more infamous takeover by Vladimir Lenin's Bolsheviks, sparking the Russian Civil War. One of the deadliest civil wars in human history, its casualties outnumbered even those of the First World War. The war was broadly divided into the Reds, the Bolsheviks, and the White Movement, a loosely organized alliance of anti-Bolsheviks, anarchists, foreign powers, and civilian militias. The war was devastating. The biggest killer was starvation. The Soviets, a Russian word for workers' union, surrendered to Germany in 1918, and the Reds and the Whites committed numerous mass killings of one another in the Red and White Terror respectively, including the Bolsheviks' brutal murder of the Russian royal family in their Yekaterinburg homestead. The Reds soundly defeated the Whites after Leon Trotsky forced conscription and the Western Allies began withdrawing troops at the conclusion of the Great War. Lenin planned on expanding the revolution to Europe but was handed a crushing defeat by the Poles at the Battle of Warsaw, which saw that Bolshevism would be contained to the former Russian Empire. Separate Soviet republics were formed in their territory and united to form the USSR. When Lenin died, a young radical criminal with the Communist Party took power. Joseph Stalin. Civil wars rarely breed a stable and united society, and the USSR was no different. To secure their grip on power, the NKVD, or Soviet Secret Police, was formed, rounding up and executing thousands of anti-revolutionaries. The Gulag was established, the infamous Siberian concentration camps, where millions would eventually be worked to death. The USSR was now a totalitarian one-party state. Stalin is considered by many to be the most evil man in history, a paranoid and cruel tyrannical narcissist who surrounded himself with those loyal to him. He instituted radical reforms to transform Russia into an industrial power, causing a man-made famine in Ukraine, southern Russia and Kazakhstan, which killed millions. He rounded up and executed members of the Communist Party, wealthy oligarchs and the Red Army and executed them in the Great Purge. Millions of political prisoners were executed or sent to the Gulag. He made an alliance with Adolf Hitler, dividing Europe between their spheres of influence. And together, the two tyrannical warmongers invaded Poland in 1939, beginning the Second World War. The Soviets narrowly escaped war with Britain and France, who condemned the invasion because their treaty with Poland only required action in the case of German aggression, not Soviet. Free from their interference, the Soviets invaded Finland, but due to Stalin's purges, the invasion was a stunning failure. So they settled instead to annex the Baltic states and Moldova while committing atrocities in Poland, such as the Katyn Massacre, which they later blamed on the Nazis. Events took a sharp turn when Hitler betrayed his Russian ally and invaded the Soviet Union in 1941. And so began the four-year-long conflict that would see the capture of millions of POWs, the starvation of millions of Soviet citizens, and the deportation of millions more communist officials and Jews to concentration camps. By some estimates, nearly half of the USSR's 4.8 million Jewish people lost their lives, most of them living in the Russian shtetl. The death toll was aggravated by Stalin's refusal to evacuate cities, thinking that the Red Army would fight harder to protect their homes, such as in Leningrad where hundreds of thousands starved in the three-year-long siege, and how Russian tanks were sent into battle half-built, and how in Stalingrad, the largest battle in history, logistical failures meant that soldiers often went into battle with unloaded rifles and those deserting the front line were shot by their own comrades. Stalingrad was however the turning point of the war, and a point of pride for the Soviet people, managing to surround the overextended and unarmored German army, ensuring the Wehrmacht would advance no further. 
the Red Army soon launched a large-scale counter-offensive, pushing back the overextended Wehrmacht the next two years. Their progress was so quick that it looked like the Soviet Union was going to defeat Nazi Germany single-handedly, as Allied operations up until now had focused on North Africa and Italy. In fact, the Red Army had on their own pushed back the Wehrmacht, a massive 1,600 kilometers of captured territory, to the border of the German Reich, before the Allies had even opened a second front at Normandy. It was a triumphant moment for the young and poor nation, winning the war on sheer grit and manpower. However, the term winning is probably not the right word, as they'd lost between 20 and 30 million people in the war, more than any other nation. At the conclusion of the war, the Allies and the Soviets became enemies once more, with Stalin's reluctance to leave occupied Eastern Europe, choosing instead to set up Soviet-friendly governments in all-captured territory. Soviet territory even extended back to Stalin's original deal with Hitler, and when a metaphorical Iron Curtain descended across Europe, the Cold War began. The Cold War deserves a video of its own, but suffice it to say that it would change the world forever. How did Tsarist Russia become such a hotbed of revolutionaries in the first place? From the reforms of Peter the Great to the wise rule of Empress Catherine, perhaps no less a destabilizing factor in Russia's history came with Napoleon Bonaparte's invasion of Russia. In the two-part series, Napoleon, the Invasion of Russia, you can learn about this event. It covers the last great conflict to touch Russia in the century before the Great War, and the social and economic factors that resulted from the French Revolution. I highly recommend this documentary for a more in-depth look at Russian history, which you can watch for free over at CuriosityStream, a great place to watch amazingly well-produced documentaries and other non-fiction content. Simply use the URL curiositystream.com Sweeney for a 31-day free trial to watch this or any other show you'd be interested in, including history, technology, science, and so much more. Give the site a visit and start watching amazing documentaries today. Thank you for watching, remember to like and subscribe, you can follow me on Twitter for any updates, and consider supporting at Patreon. Until next time.